I should feel picked on. Um, good morning. It's, uh, it's such an honor to be here. Um, as she said, my name is Chernoba. I'm from Sierra Leone. Um, I have to start by saying what a privilege it's been being here. I have to say I come into most of these conversations with a healthy dose of skepticism because uh, for the people that know me or, uh, you know, I... I used to say I was the poster child for youth participation in Sierra Leone. I started when I was myself 14 years old, helped set up all the children advisory panels for plan and save the children and went on to be in the UN and sat next to Malala when she gave a big speech at the UN. So I know this infrastructure of feel good as, um, you know, because we do good and we applaud ourselves. And I have come to be incredibly uh, critical of, of, of this infrastructure. And so when I was invited, I, I just thought, oh my God, I know what the conversations are going to be all over again. But I have to say it's been really challenging. It's been critical when it's needed to be, and it's been inspiring. And, I've, and, I, and I really applaud the organizers for pulling together this really fantastic group. Now, um, I just want to share a little bit about my, the work we do at Purposeful and how we are trying to be different and shifting the power. When Ebola struck in 2014, I was in New York at the time also sitting in those conversations and I decided, it's a whole different story, that I wanted to go back to my country to, uh, to volunteer. Uh, my organization I was working with at the time or the groups that I was working with were very uncomfortable. You remember when Ebola was the plague, when everybody was trying to get out of West Africa and even if you talked to a West African, shame on those countries, including South Africa, I like to call them out, because they're an African country, and they banned us all from going to their country, even if you were not in Sierra, even if you had not been to Sierra Leone, if you had a passport from Sierra Leone, they banned us from going to their countries because of Ebola. Um, and I said, <laughs> of course, I'm going back to Sierra Leone. When I went there, I went into many of these conversations, and I realized that in the aid infrastructure, and we talk a lot about shifting power, when there are emergencies, that's actually sometimes when you get to test the instinct of people who has power, who deserves power, who deserves resources, and who is making the decisions that are ultimately the most powerful decisions. And I know we've talked a lot about race in this room, but oftentimes it's white or Western people from often neo-colonial, neo -colonial, very patriarchal institutions that are sitting there and making these decisions. And ultimately, the last set of people that they're thinking about are girls, especially in terms of handing real power to girls. So when we set up Purposeful, uh, we thought we wanted to be in that room to challenge those power structures and to make sure that the resources are reaching the last girls. Fast forward, uh, when we set Purposeful up, we, we've been a very, I, I will say, a successful organization. In two years, we have been in most of these conversations, we've changed some of the conversations about what it means to be a feminist national organization in Sierra Leone. We're competing in bids with these international organizations and beating them, um, and winning major grants to shift the power in Sierra Leone because we're community driven, we're community led, we only give resources to, to groups that are in communities that have not received money from outside Sierra Leone that are not religious. And unlike a lot of these organizations, we're political. We're overt about our political agenda. We say we are feminist. We say we're against the system. A lot of the infrastructure in the NGO system says, oh, we don't want to pretend like we're coming to change the society. Why do you exist? Oh, change does not come from outside. Change has to come. It's basically an excuse, right? Because they are aware that they are hold a position of power that yet they are influencing, but we're not honest about that influence. And so we say, oh, no, no, we're not here to change. We want the people to tell us what they want to do. No, we say we are here to change. We're here, by the way, to overthrow the system. And we're an activist and we're an advocate and, 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 and uh, a very strong uh, convening organization. But finally, the, the, the thing that has challenged us the most is we thought we were coming in to change the way power works, to be in the conversation, to be Sierra Leonean and be unapologetic about that. 
But in two years, we, we realized that in some ways, we were only beginning to replicate the very systems that we were criticizing, but just different. And this is part of my critique of some of these conversations. We just think, oh, just remove the pyramid that's on top of me, and I'm just here now, but oh, it's good, because I'm Sierra Leonean, so it's okay. I can just be the same power system that I've criticized all this while, but just because I'm Sierra Leonean, it's okay. And the resources are not getting to the girls that actually inspired us when we started this was a group of girls in a place called Moyamba who had a sun collective. We're not interested in formalizing. We'll never register as an organization. None of them went to school. All of them have babies. All of them are married. But to, to fight against the system in their own way, they come together, they organize every day. They will never get money, including from the local organizations that are in that community. We'll never give them money. So at Purposeful, this year, we've started working with getting money to girls like that directly, and it's not cash transfer, it's actually an award, it's a grant, but it has no ifs, no buts, no requirements to come back to us. We'll probably give you a phone and say, if you want to take a picture and share with us, we'd like to amplify that story and link you with other groups of girls that are doing this similar work. And people ask, but how do you deal with the risk? Well, I say to them, look back at all the money that DFID, all these other big NGOs have spent over the years, it's been risky. They've wasted it. You look at the Ebola money. There's been many, many examples of all, all, all of that money is wasted. But even the notion of who's worthy of risk has inherent neocolonial, racist, and misogynistic, to use the stronger word, I was going to go for an easy one, um, assumptions. Who's worthy of making that risk? Who's worthy of being invested with that power? And we're saying, girls are. They can fail, and failing itself is a privilege, and that's what we're trying to change. Thank you.